Hello guys, my name is SVB and we're back for another VOD review. Today we're going to be looking at a silver level Winston player called Eddard uh, and he's going to be playing on Noombani and I just want to focus mainly on his Winston play because he does play Orisa as well on this map but I have covered Orisa and I think a lot of the same things apply. Now with this being my first foray into anything lower than plat level um, there's a lot of things that I can see here that could be improved upon. I'm going to try not to make this into a bash fest. I'm going to try and just, just focus on a couple things that could be improved. Mostly I'm going to try and focus on three things. First, uh, jumping, jump timing, when to use it, where to use it, who to use it against. Two is bubble placement, because obviously these are the two tools that Winston has, the jump and a bubble. Those are his bread and butter, so getting them right is absolutely key. And then finally, I'm going to try and look at the two different styles of Winston that you can play uh, and how they kind of differ slightly when you should be using one over the other um, and more stuff like that. So let's get into it guys. So as I said, one of the things I want to focus on this game is jump timing and also bubble timing and you're going to see some good examples here of a few mistakes made with jumping and bubbling. Uh, and there's just one thing I want you guys to think about when you're playing Winston uh, and you want to think about when you should be using your jump, when you should be using your bubble. I just want to encourage everybody, and particularly Eddard, just think about what is the purpose achieved with every time you use a move. I want you to think about what is the purpose of your jump when you're doing it. Every time you're doing a jump, what are you trying to achieve? And then the same thing with the bubble. When, you, when you're using your bubble, what are you trying to achieve? So when you're jumping, where are you jumping and who are you jumping and what's going to happen where you jump? And with the bubble, same thing. Uh, where are you placing your bubble? Who is it going to protect? And what's going to happen when the bubble breaks? So let's see this, these points play out. And I'll just let the first instance go. Because uh, it's right off on defense. First thing out of the gates. You see here, Edder just decides to jump on the bus as the attackers come in. Now, I, I would like to encourage Edder to think, well, why, why, have, why have they done this? Why, what, what is to be gained by standing on this bus here? Because as Winston, you're super short range. Um, and the enemy is almost definitely going to have higher range than you. And most characters in the game have higher range than Winston. So standing here in this bus really just makes you quite an easy target to be poked. And you're going to see here that Edder drops his bubble as well. That breaks very, very quickly. And very easily they go down to 200 health. Now I've got to ask them, what did they achieve with that jump? And I'm not saying that to try and, um, you know, criticize them or, tr or trying to say that to try and make them feel bad. I just genuinely want to encourage a sort of new way of thinking about the jump in the bubble when they play Winston. You can see here they got 4% ult charge from that entire poke, whereas guaranteed the enemy got quite a lot of ult charge from that. And more, more than that, most importantly now, 5 seconds before a jump and 9 seconds before a bubble. So that means if the enemy really wanted to punish Eddard's team now, they have a good 9 second window before Eddard can really do anything else in the fight. So that one really, really minor maneuver, which is just, oh, I'm going to jump to the bus uh, and I'm just going to poke the enemy down. Because there was no purpose to it, because it was aimless and because it wasn't really thought out, and it hadn't really thought about what would happen when they jump onto the bus and what would happen when the enemy come in. That little small mistake can be, can be sort of costly and it can end up punishing you. In this case, that doesn't happen. But I just want you guys to remember these kind of things when you think about what's gonna, what, what you want to do with your Winston play. So as I fast forward it a touch, you'll see again the Eddard is sort of stood on this high ground and now they're trying to poke with their cannon. But clearly, the range is too much. So at this point, again, their cannon poke is useless. The Widow jumps up and they just decide to stroll over to the Widow. Now, the Widow is clearly not going to be amazing if they're playing a silver level. They're not going to be the most technically outstanding widows so you can expect they're not going to hit many headshots but still it's very very dangerous to just walk up to a widow with no protection no bubble you're kind of asking to be to be domed in the head there as it is they force the widow off and they continue to keep this high ground but they're not really watching what's going on in the low ground as soon as they see somebody they jump and this is another thing that i want to focus on so going back to jump timing and bubble timing uh, i would like to encourage eddard and anybody who's watching who feels that they maybe they play the same way don't just jump the first target you see because they're not always the right target. You need to think about who you're jumping um, and what's going to be achieved here. So Eddard decides to jump this character and you can see here, maybe you can tell, maybe you cannot, it's a Farah. 
Now, when you jump a Farah as Winston, you're really, really not going to gain a lot. Because if the Farah is any way decent, they're just going to use their shift ability, their rocket jump, their uh, rocket pack, should I say, and just fly up out of your reach. Now, the fact that this Farah is here in the ground in the first place obviously indicates that they're not the smartest. But jumping a Farah as Winston is, is just sort of largely pointless unless she's really low and you feel like you can finish her off. So see here, Eddard, Eddard jumps down on this Farah, he drops his bubble, so he's committed all his moves to this engagement and the Farah quite easily, as I said, just uses her rocket pack, flies out of his range. Now he's committed to this position where he's really not going to be doing a lot. His bubble breaks very quickly and he's very focused on the Farah, but now the enemy team has moved in They've taken an aggressive positioning on the point. Uh, and you're going to see here that Eddard decides to jump again. And this time they jump without their bubble. Now to Winston players, one thing that I want to advise you is try to never jump without your bubble unless you're really, really confident that you can survive that jump. So in this scenario, I'm just going to rewind it a second. As Eddard is looking onto the point, the entire enemy team, minus the Farah who's up there, is stood in this little tight block. Now, Eddard doesn't have their bubble. All they have is their jump. So again, this is what I mean when, when, I, when I tell you guys, think about what's going to happen when you jump. Because Eddard surely has to know that as they jump into all four or five of these enemy team, if they turn around and focus him, he's absolutely helpless. He's just 400 HP of ult charge waiting to be farmed. Because Winston is very, very vulnerable without his without his bubble, you don't want to jump in without it. And you definitely don't want to jump four enemy clumped together, you know, five enemy players clumped together. If you do jump without your bubble, it should be against one isolated target who you feel that you can kill even without the aid of the bubble. In this case, Eder decides to jump in. They don't have any protection and they get slept very, very easily because they didn't have a bubble. They didn't have any protection and always, always... When you jump an Ana, you, there's, a, there's a real possibility that you get slept on. Or you get put to sleep, should I say. So you can see here, as they get woken up, they're down to 200 HP. Now the enemy team, if they were smarter, would have focused Eddard down and killed them. But as it is, the damage is done, the, the Torb is dead, uh, the enemy team has got great positioning on the point now. And you know they've really just got control of point A quite easily, without really much needed to be done on their part. All it really took was just one little movement in, uh, a bad jump, and, and it was really, really easy for them to win this fight and win point A. Okay, so fast forward. The payload is unlocked now, and Eddard's, Eddard's team has to defend the streets phase of Nubani. Now, I just want to I wanna look at what happens here with Eddard's positioning, because this, this generally is good positioning here. Where you, where you want to be stood is around the corner, when the, in the, particularly on this payload map with Nubani. When the payload is in this area, and if your team is all spawned together, then this, this angle here is perfect to hold. So this is good positioning. But what Eddard does with this now, it, again, it has room to be improved upon. And I'd just like to suggest a few things as we let the clip play on what they could do better in this scenario. So already you can see that um, Eddard is kind of poked out of cover. And again, remember what I said, guys, that Winston has really, really short range. He's one of the shortest range character in Overwatch. So poking against this really fat setup with the Orisa shield, the Widow Widowmaker, poking your head out like this is just asking for trouble. You're asking to be hit. You shouldn't be poking your head out unless they're within touching range and they're clearly not at this point. The Tesla cannon clearly can't reach them. So this is just a, you know, sort of a needless poke. And if the Widow was better there, she would have hit him. Now again, Edit has decided to jump in and the entire enemy team is right here. Uh, and in reality, if I just take it one step back, and in reality, Eddard didn't even need to jump. This is, what, three steps forward? And they're in the same distance, basically, that they covered with their entire jump. So really, they've just wasted their jump. Now, you could argue that the jump does damage, so that there's a, that there's a benefit to jumping someone aggressively. But that only really makes sense if you think you can burst that person down. If you jump someone while the rest of their team are clearly right here, you're just putting yourself in a dangerous situation. And you'll see what happens as a consequence of Eddard using their jump and not having it in a second when, bam, they get booped by the Lucio. Two seconds till the jump. And they're going to fall to their death. 
You have to remember guys, the jump, while being an engagement tool, is also your only escape should things go badly. If Eddard in this situation walks up and just starts poking the enemy team, that his, his body will stop the payload from moving any further. So just by walking up, poking the enemy team, he achieves the same thing as he does with his jump. Except, should things go wrong, he has the option of jumping out back to the safety of his team. So just think about that guys, don't use your jump unless you have to. Don't use your jump unless there's a really specific purpose behind why you're doing it. Now, fast forward a little bit. After that last death, um, Eddard decides to switch to Orisa. And as I've told you guys, I have just done an Orisa video quite recently. So I encourage you to go to that Orisa video now if you're, if you're looking for tips on Orisa. And to Eddard as well. I think if you watch the Orisa video, you will pick up a lot of things that should help improve your Orisa play. I don't want to waste your guys' time. I don't want to waste Eddard's time by treading ground that's already been tread upon. So fast forward from the Orisa play, uh, Eddard's team managed to hold, hold the enemy team on the final point, which is pretty good on Numbani. And now moving on attack, he decides to go back to Winston, which is definitely good because Orisa is, is quite hard to manage on attack yeah, here. Now, I just want to point out the first mistake that Eddard makes uh, with his Winston decision making here. So he decides, having seen the Roadhog, to jump up to this high ground and start contesting him. Now, first of all, this is a bad idea on a player v player level, because Roadhog is a very, very bad matchup for Winston. Roadhog, you're never, never, never going to kill Roadhog as Winston without the help of your teammates. And if you isolate yourself in a room with him one on one, as Eddard has done here, all it really takes for him is, is a couple of shots. One scrap gun shot, hook shot, and maybe another shot just to finish the things off. But three shots there and he's dead. So that, that's really a couple seconds here or there and he could be toast with this Roadhog. So they definitely don't want to do that on a player v player level. But on a positioning level, I also want to talk about why this room is not a good place to go as Winston. So here I have the top down view of Numbani. So Eddard's team is coming from this direction. Um, and he decides to jump into this room here. Now, the problem with going into this room is Winston that this is a very, very narrow, narrow hallway, narrow pass. Uh, and the enemy can really set up on this on this choke very easily. Now as Winston, your greatest strength is your mobility and not your ability to poke in small confined areas. That's where tanks like Ryan, Zarya and Roadhog excel. Where people like Winston and D.Va excel is in wide open spaces because they can cover those gaps much, much quicker. So by pushing yourself in this, in this tight, narrow hallway, you're playing into the hands of the enemy team's composition, which is that they have a Roadhog. So pushing into this narrow chokeway allows him to make it much easier to land hooks, to hit those shots with his right click. Um, so instead, I would have encouraged Eddard to go up down Main Street and then assess the environment, assess where the enemies hold up. If they are here, then that's fine. You can you can sort of skirt the edges of this wall here and force them, on to, force them to drop on a point. Um, and quite often what you'll see is that defenders can be quite split up. So even if there are a few here, there'll be some here, or maybe some here. And in that case, that's the perfect time for Winston to strike, particularly if you have a support tank like a Hammond or a Diva who can dive with you. And that's when you make the leap over there, over here. You capitalize on the isolated members, um, and then you pick them off, and you kind of ignore these guys who are, who are going to be short-ranged and fat anyways, and you make advantage of, of Winston's strengths which is the ability to close down large distances. So going back to the clip, Eddard gets stuck in this room with, with the hog. Now the hog decides to run for some unknown reason, uh, but they do eventually land a hook. And Eddard is kind of lucky that his team is there to, to protect him. His brig and his Moira are there to keep him healed up. But in reality, that, that, that maneuver there, that little passage of play, really didn't go in his favor. He really didn't achieve a lot. Um, and, if it, and if the Roadhog's team had helped him out the way Eddard's team helped him out, uh, Eddard would probably have been dead. But what you see next from Eddard is definitely what he should be doing, and this is what I was talking about with the top down. He sees the Widow, he jumps her, he isolates her, and very, very easily he kills her. Now that's exactly what you should be doing as Winston, and this is going to go into what I'm going to talk about uh, for the rest of this VOD now, is the two styles of play as Winston. So the first style of Winston play is as a main tank, and as a sort of protector and a shielder um, and somebody who's really leading the front line. The second mode is to be a more kill-orientated uh, punisher of bad positioning 
somebody who, who seeks out isolated targets and jumps on them and kills them and sort of moves his team forward by getting those isolated kills instead. So in this scenario, by getting the Widowmaker, Eddard, Eddard really helps his team out, he removes that pressure, and then after that it's easy for him to just stroll on point, poke down the Sarisa, poke down the Zen, and his team takes point A really, really easily. So Eddard's team takes point A, the payload unlocks, and what you're going to see now is that Eddard's tank partner decides to switch from Wrecking Ball onto Arisa. Now this changes the equation for Eddard quite dramatically really because up until now as, as Winston alongside a Hammond, Eddard is the main tank. It's his responsibility to be the sort of the front line and the protector, main protector of his team. But once you have an Arisa in play and you're the Winston next to an Arisa, that shifts your role to the off tank pretty much. And that actually gives Winston a lot more freedom in terms of what he can do. Now this doesn't mean that it's easier or that he's got a free role now to just go around and, and play like a DPS. But what it means is that he allows him to be much more of a kill-oriented Winston. And like I referred to earlier, it's that latter type of play, the punisher of bad positioning Winston. So I'll just, just for ease of access, I'll refer to it as off-tank Winston. So you'll see here that uh, you know Eddard's position has changed now. He decides to make this jump. Now again, this is this is what I would refer to as an aimless jump. As I was saying earlier, uh, I'd really encourage Edder to think what he's achieving with this jump, because as you can see here, there's a Zen, there's a Hog, there's a there's a Widowmaker, um, and he's pretty much jumping in on his own. Now, should the Hog hook him midair? Should the Widow land a headshot midair? Should the Zen land a few shots, uh, a few charged orbs his way? He's going to go down, you know, low HP very very quickly. As it is, he lands, he drops his bubble. Now this bubble is wasted, it gets destroyed very, very quickly because the enemy team has a lot of characters who can just spam damage out. Uh, and now he's he's there with 10 seconds without his bubble. But you can see that his Arisa is here now. So his role has shifted. The primary shield is the Arisa shield and the team is now going to defer behind the Arisa shield as they should. So now this what this means for Eddard I'm going to try and point it out on the top down. Now, rather than having to stick to the payload as it goes along the path, he has much more free free reign to go around, go around on little flanks, and try and find isolated members of the enemy team. So in this scenario, what Eddard, Eddard should be doing is trying to think about sneaking around the site and then jumping onto this high ground area and this this railing here to try and dislodge any 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 of the enemy characters who are occupying this high ground because his team is going to be steadily moving the payload behind the Arisa anyways. So if he just sits on the payload and pokes with his team, he's really not achieving a lot. Instead, with especially with an enemy Widowmaker on the team, you, you really want to be trying to focus her out, trying to make her life really, really difficult by jumping her constantly. And if you see any in the enemy team out of position, isolated, that's the kind of person you should be jumping. And like I said on my previous video, guys, on any payload map, point B always holds a lot of verticality. So as Winston, you're the perfect character to address the verticality, jump on the high ground, while the rest of your team moves to the street face. So Eddard is moving along, but instead of actually doing what I was suggesting, they're kind of poking. Now here they, they do a good thing, which is that they see the Widow, they jump to her on the side, but they quickly sort of lose track of what they should be doing. As the Widowmaker hooks up, Eddard kind of tunnels in on the Zen, they pop their Primal Rage. Um, and here you're going to see that they don't really achieve a lot with this Primal Rage. They're kind of missing most of their swings. Uh, their, their Mercy is doing their best to keep them alive. But um, they're not really doing a lot of a lot of much, to be honest. There's not a lot of damage, not a lot of displacement. However, what does happen as a sort of secondary consequence of Eddard's play is that the enemy team gets quite distracted with him. They all start trying to focus him down. And in that chaos... Edward's team is going to start making kills. Now as a tank, one of your main jobs is to create space. And what I mean by that is, as a tank, you should be occupying territory that allows your team to move forward. So in this case, if you control this, this front zone around the corner, if you control this zone, then you allow your team to come through the choke. If the enemy team holds up here and controls this side or this angle here, then they make it very difficult for Edward's team to move forward. So it's an unintended sort of consequence Eddard ends up creating a lot of space for his team because he pushes the enemy team back and then he distracts them. So again, while this bubble placement is not good and it breaks very, very quickly, Eddard is able to create enough space for his team to move forward behind the Orisa shield. 
And again, th though this jump is kind of ill-advised, it breaks very the bubble breaks very quickly again. And it is is doing the right thing naturally in terms of tank instincts, which is to try and create space for his team, because by jumping this area, he creates all this space for his team to walk into. So kudos to Eddard for having the natural tank instinct of trying to create space. But I'd just like to encourage them to think more about, again, your, your jump timing, your bubble timing. And also with the Primal Rage, I'd encourage you to maybe look at some videos of, of how to sort of manage your Primal Rage juggles, manage the uh, distances between the jump and the punch and how far your punch sends someone back and how far your jump goes. And at some point, I will try and make a Winston guide to explain these things, explain the jump tech the punch tech but for now just think about those things try and watch a guide if you can uh, and just try and improve on that aspect because the space creating was very well done so again Eddard sees the enemy team and he jumps in now he puts his bubble down a little bit too early meaning that it's actually behind him as he goes to poke this Zen and this soldier but because he's creating space because his team is able to move forward they're able to push bully the enemy team off the point and just this lonely I reaper comes in to try and contest uh, and he doesn't last very long and again it's quite it's a fairly easy wipe for Eddard's team from this point on although this here this is definitely a sin that I would like to point out to Eddard uh, his mercy in the comms I ask for someone to come back to pick them up if I just rewind here so you see here Eddard becomes distracted as they hear the call they start looking around behind them and this is a big big no-no while I understand the advantage of trying to bring your mercy in earlier, if you go back to get her in this extreme fashion while the fight is clearly, clearly going on, essentially what you're doing is dying for a couple seconds and then coming back with your teammates a couple seconds later. Instead, you should stay in the fight, continue to win, because winning the fight now is the most important thing. If in the three seconds that he goes to pick up his mercy, one person dies, that's, that's already more of a loss than having the mercy come back two seconds quicker so just that's just a small point there never 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 disengage the fight just to go back and you know taxi your mercy along stay in the fight do your role as a main tank create space but as it as it happens Eddard's team manages to win this fight still quite comfortably without him uh, and they get they get the payload on point b so fast forward a little bit and what happens here is that Eddard jumps to the high ground and he finds a reaper floating in his face. Now he pokes the, wind, the reaper down with the aid of his mercy damage boosting him. And obviously Eddard wants this kill. Now a small note there is that as Winston, again a small tech thing, is that if you alternate punches in between your Tesla cannon, you extend how much damage you can do for the same 100 clip. So in this case, if Eddard manages to punch instead of constantly tesla cannon if they punch here they keep enough of their tesla cannon charge to actually finish this with this reaper off instead the reaper escapes on just one hp you can see this painstakingly low hp one punch would do it um but edit edit doesn't manage it and to try and confirm this kill they end up primal raging and chasing the reaper if i take it back and turn the volume up you'll hear what happens as the soldier runs right by him here the soldier Sprint spy and Eddard is so tunneled on killing this reaper that you're gonna hear now what happens. Got you in my sights. So as you heard, behind Eddard, the enemy soldier has popped tack visor. Meanwhile, Eddard is still seeking the kill on this I reaper. And what happens is that his mercy dies, um, and the soldier starts re wreaking havoc on Eddard's back line. The Reaper has taken the health pack to get to full health. And by the time that Eddard actually gets back, the soldiers killed both of Eddard's supports with his tack visor. So breaking this down uh, beat by beat, if, if Eddard alternates his punches here, he kills the Reaper. Um, if he even lands the jump here, he can kill the Reaper. And a small tip is that if you hold the back button while jumping as, as Winston, you'll go less far. So instead of going Ooh, all the way over there, you can just make a little tiny jump if you press the back button while jumping. He also kills the Reaper there if he does that. However, at this point, you cannot allow this soldier to walk past you. If you want to prop, pop Primal, you pop Primal and start bashing them both away. You definitely, definitely do not pop Primal, jump past the soldier, and allow him to tack visor your backline. Even at this point, Eddard has enough time to now turn around 
and tend his team and take the brunt of the damage with the ta with with his primal rage and that is one use of primal rage that's very good is that if the enemy pops an ult like tac visor if you primal rage and just body block just stand in front of the soldier and deny him the ability to shoot anyone but you then you're trading your primal rage for tac visor which is a huge huge win instead edder tunnels on the on the reaper um, the soldier wrecks his back line and this fight is lost as fast forwarding a little bit this next passage's play is really really interesting and there's quite a lot to break down in it i'm just going to pause uh, each bit and talk you through what goes on so the first thing uh edward's moira pops coalescence way too early which means that his team is forced to engage now edward has kind of stood stationarily on the payload and remember what i said that when you have an arisa in your team it becomes your job as winston to play the sort of off tank role which means that you're a lot more flexible to go around on flanks so in this play, in this in this situation, Edder should be maybe looking around the corner to see if they can find an isolated target to jump on from back here, or even go all the way in for out here, come around the side, and then do the same thing, pick out anybody who's isolated. As it is, as Edder decides to stay on the cart and just kind of poke aimlessly. Then what they do is decide to put the bubble down, uh, and bear in mind that there's an Arisa shield, you know, just a few steps behind them. So Edder, there's, the, you know, there's no, there's no real need to do this. Um, just think, just think more about w what you're trying to achieve with your bubble. In this case, the bubble is just going to break very, very quickly, uh, and you're going to be there for 13 seconds without your bubble cooldown. But what Edder does spot is that the enemy Reaper is teleporting to the high ground behind Edder. Uh, it's you know somewhere back, back uh, off screen. Now at this point. Uh, Eddard, Eddard knows what the Reaper's intentions are. He, they, you know, they turn immediately, uh, and they know that the Reaper is surely going to drop down a Death Blossom on, on on their team. Now, if Eddard was in voice, this would be the perfect time to call out, guys. The Reaper TP'd above us. He's going to Death Blossom. Be ready, you know, alert your team to what's going to happen. But okay, I understand how people people sometimes don't want to be in voice. In this scenario, it becomes your job if you're the only person who saw this happen becomes your job to deal with this reaper. Now how do you deal with this reaper? Let's find out. So Edder jumps up and they get primal rage. Now they can see that this reaper is about to jump down uh, and surely death blossom his team. At this point it's on it's incumbent on uh, on Edder to do one of a few things. And that's definitely not or run back and stare and watch as your team dies and then go in. So if I take it back if Eddard on the first point doesn't drop their shield when they see the Reaper TPing above them, they have the potential to come down and drop a bubble on top of this Reaper, containing his, containing his Death Blossom to a very small area and buying his team that extra one or two seconds it needs to deal with the Reaper. Because maybe in that one or two seconds the, Reap the Brigitte comes in and, and stuns him, or maybe considering how low health he is, his team just kills him. The other option is to jump down, use Primal Rage, and bash your Reaper in this direction, or sir, I say the enemy Reaper, off in this direction, bash him away from your team. But of course, these are split-second decisions, so I don't want to I don't want to uh, beat down an editor too much because this is a, this is a very very split-second decision. You know, it's almost it's quite unfortunate. The same second he decides to put their shield down, the Reaper also TPs, and then the second that uh, editor gets there, Primal Rage, the Reaper decides to drop down and, and Death Blossom. So these are, these are sort of split-second decisions that come down to instinct more than anything. But again, if you, if you start training your instinct, that's where it comes, right? That's where you climb, is once you start to train your instincts to go a certain way. If Eddard can train their instincts to respond to these situations in these certain ways, so as a main tank, to be almost self-sacrificial, to throw your abilities and your body on the line to protect your team, then these kind of situations can be, resol can, can, you know, be avoided. Now, after this passage of play, and you can see here that the Reaper has gotten two kills along with the Supercharger. Edder decides to actually dive in and attack the enemy backline. Now what they do here is fantastic, which is that they find the, they find the Zen, they isolate them, kill them, find the Soldier, isolate them, pop Primal Rage, and this is some excellent Primal Rage juggling. They kill the Soldier. So here Edder has got two picks alongside the help of their Mercy. But the reason this is a bad decision is that you know your team has already lost two people. So by, ki by killing a further two of the enemy team, all you've really done is even the odds. 
So all that energy, you know, the jumping, the primal raging, is done just to even the odds. And immediately, the enemy reaper kills Eder's Moira. So now, you're back to a 3v4. And of course, the enemy is right, right here. Their spawn is right around the corner. Meaning that they have the spawn advantage, so while the time that your team takes this huge, long route to come back to the payload, the enemy team has a couple steps and bam, they're back. So in this scenario, although Eder does fantastically and gets two kills for his team, uh, and you know perhaps they're thinking in their mind, oh, I just killed two people, why is no one following in? And that's something you guys will definitely have heard in your ranked games, where one player of the team might say, oh, I just got three kills, what are you guys doing? In this scenario, Eder, uh, there, was, there was no need to go in. The fight's already over when you've lost two players. So by going in and, and getting two kills, all you've really done is even the odds, and, and that scenario in a 4v4, the enemy team has the much bigger advantage with the spawn advantage. So this this uh, effort, while, while very well done and very noble, uh, is to no avail really. And as you can see here, the, as the, the longer the fight goes on, the worse it gets for Edward's team. Now fast forward a little bit, coming to the last fight, uh, this, is, this is quite a messy and scrappy fight, so I'm just going to try and sort of let the clip play I'm just gonna run you through the sort of micro mistakes that Eddard makes in the end his team wins this fight and they win the, uh, you know they win the game and largely Eddard does quite well but I just want to run you through the little micro micro things that you can improve that'll take your Winston play to the next level so coming coming down over the top Eddard drops down on top of the enemy team now this is a largely good bubble although perhaps second too early because you can see it's already, uh, Edward has already reached the edges of the bubble, which is not good. But largely it's the right idea. The two occasions when you want to use the bubble is one, to protect yourself, obviously. And the second is to isolate the enemy team or, or particularly one or two enemy players. Because when you put the bubble around them, you essentially put them in a cone of silence. Um, and you deny the, you know, their allies from healing them in a lot of scenarios, helping them by doing damage to you. Or just using any positive abilities on them. So if you if you isolate them by putting a bubble down on them, you essentially make it very easy for your team to pick them. So this is the right idea. They bubble the Zen. They force the trance. Now this primal is a little bit um, messy again. They do have the soldier and the Lucio in the corner, but they're not really achieving anything because the trance is healing all the damage the editor is doing. So this fixation on the Lucio and the soldier really amounts to not a lot. Um, but again, here the, the instinct is good, which is that they see this Zen uh, and they decide to isolate them again. They jump on the Zen. They came out quite easily. But now here, um, Edward starts focusing on a Roadhog, and that's something I've noticed they do quite a lot. Um, and you definitely, definitely, definitely don't want to be focusing on Roadhog as Winston. Uh, as you can might have heard, a barrage just went went by beyond uh, behind Edward that they should have turned around to try and deal with. Uh, they should have been trying to turn around and help their team. Instead, they tunnel on this Roadhog, follow him into this tunnel. Uh, and this is really not the place you want to be with the Roadhog. Isolated in a in a sort of narrow corridor where his hooks are easy to land, his, his scrap gun is easy to shoot. And if the Roadhog had a little bit of better aim, if the Mercy wasn't healing Eddard, uh, they would have died here. But thankfully, they, they're able to survive. They poke the Roadhog down, but you notice the Roadhog pops whole hog. Um, because they've just been fed so much ult by Eddard. So that's another danger of just sitting there um, and, and trying to poke damage down on a hero that you don't kill, particularly a fat one right, like Roadhog, who can absorb all that damage, heal it, and turn it into ult charge. So Roadhog gets whole hog, he destroys Eddard's uh, Junkrat's tire. But once again, Eddard does the right thing, just isolate the Zenyatta, uh, kill him, he's on his own, he's got no, not got, got no friends. Uh, then once they, he's out, of the pitcher, you jump back in, help your team. Again, a largely good bubble, although uh, again a second or two early. Ideally, you should you should land on the on the Lucio and drop the bubble right on top of him, so the two of you are in the middle, and then you can do your little Winston dance where you you juke around the edges of the bubble to make sure you don't take any damage. Uh, the Lucio drops a sound barrier. The fight continues to be messy. Edward spots a couple people on the left and they pop Primal Rage. Ideally, you'd want to be pushing them back and off the edge. Uh, but Soldier is tricky and Reaper just raids. So that's that's not the worst thing. But again, if Eddard 
uh, try and look for any guide videos on how to manage your primal juggle. Because you can see here you're, you're over jumping a couple times. Your, your fists are pretty much doing nothing. You eventually do catch the soldier. So by the time uh, you do, the fight is over, your team is won. And it's victory. So, to summarize what I said guys, starting with the Winston tips, plan your jumps and plan your bubbles. Just try and visualize uh, what's going to happen when you jump a certain place, what's going to happen when you drop your bubble. Just think about all these things when you're using your abilities because they're all you have is Winston. Remember that your jump is your only escape, so if you can get to somewhere without using your jump, then do that. Similarly, your bubble is fragile. It's not like a Ryan shield or a Risa shield. It has a very, very long cooldown, and if you drop it, you're essentially a very, very exposed monkey. Furthermore, figure out whether you're the main tank or the off tank, and I use this as quotes because Winston isn't an off tank. But if you're in a situation where you have an Orisa, or for whatever reason your team is playing a certain style, figure out where you're the protector Winston, or whether you're the position punisher Winston. Use natural cover as much as you can. Again, going back to the idea of the bubble, uh, you really don't want to be using the bubble. Your barrier is a resource that needs to be managed like anything else. So just try and use natural cover when you can. Uh, and finally, some tips for Numbani. Point A and point B have a lot of verticality. So just bear that in mind. If you are going to play a short range comp, you have to try and address the verticality. You have to try and get up on the high ground if the enemy is there. And bearing in mind in the, uh, on point A, don't go through those narrow choke ways if you don't have a short range comp. If you have a comp for, which is dive oriented and contains a Winston, use the open ground which plays to your advantage, which is that you can cover ground quickly. But if you're in a short range comp, then go through those choke ways where your brawl style your shield heavy style will complement you better. And then point C is wide and open. So if you're going to play a shield, use it to move forwards, play behind it. Or if you're going to play a more dive oriented comp, try and flank as much as you can. Try and find ways of covering the ground quickly because it, it is a very large distance to cover. And that's all I got for today, guys. Uh, I hope you learned a lot and I hope uh, Edder found this video useful. Thank you for submitting your video. Um, you definitely had some good tank instincts there. And there was a lot of moments where you showed the right thing to do. You were quite often picking out the Zenyatta or the Widowmaker to try and uh, isolate and kill them. But if I'm being honest with you, and uh, that's the best way to be, I think if, you, if you're going to climb, uh, you have to be honest with yourself. And I'd be doing you no favors by not being honest with you. You really, really have to work a lot more on your uh, bubble placement and your jump placement. Because the higher you go, the more you're going to get punished for misusing your bubble and misusing your jump. So don't poke aimlessly, don't peek your head out um, when you really shouldn't be, don't use your jump when you don't have to, uh, don't use your bubble uh, when if you know it's going to get broken. There were a few times when you jumped into the enemy team without really any plan. So just plan a little bit ahead, picture what's going to happen in your mind uh, when you go to a certain position. And also just try and, try and work on your primal rages. Uh, look for a guide video and see if you can maybe figure out how to, how to do the juggles better how to get the jumps to land exactly where you want them to land. And also uh, try not to focus on characters like Roadhog because you did spend a lot of that uh, game fighting the enemy Roadhog uh, and he's always going to win that one on one. So if you do see a Roadhog, that's definitely a, a character you want to avoid. Get away from them. Go back to focusing on the Zen and Widow like you were doing really, really well. Uh, you know, the squishy targets are the perfect targets for Winston to attack. He can, he can very, very easily beat them in a one on one. Uh, but not the Roadhog. The Roadhog is definitely not someone you want to mess with. So that just about wraps up my video. Uh, and I still have a lot, lot more to cover. I, I, I would have preferred to go to Numbani in more depth. But this game didn't really last long. And at some point I will try and uh, release a map guide for Numbani. Uh, and I still have a lot more to talk about with Winston, Tank Play, and pretty much every other hero I haven't covered. So keep liking guys, keep sharing, keep subscribing. Uh, and I'll be back very soon with another video for you guys. See you soon.